This video is brought to you by MUBI, a curated online cinema streaming exceptional films from around the globe. Get your first month for free at MUBI.com slash Royal Ocean. I just want to sit down and talk to you, Howard. Okay. I don't want to do this right now. I don't and, want I, to and I just need to work, okay? I need to work to make Howard, sure that you're like, cheating you ass is taken care of. Goodbye. Goodbye. About halfway through the runtime of Uncut Gems, the newest film from brothers Josh and Benny Safdie, there's an eight and a half minute scene that is the very definition of the word chaos. Howard Ratner, played by Adam Sandler, has one simple objective at the start of the scene, and that's to get back the wildly expensive black opal he's rather stupidly loaned to Celtics player Kevin Garnett. And by the end of the scene, he does indeed finally get it back. But in between, everything that could possibly go wrong goes horribly wrong. I'm doing some appraisals of my own, okay? The manager of the auction, Howard, wants to enter the black opal and so keeps calling to inquire about where the opal is. Kevin Garnett's lawyer keeps calling since Howard's threatened to sue unless KG returns the opal. That message you left ah. actually was very disturbing. No, 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 I didn't mean to worry okay. you. Howard's mistress keeps calling to try and salvage their relationship. Where are you? Why aren't you answering your phone? Kevin! Kevin Garnett finally shows up with the opal in hand, but as luck would have it, the man trap in the jewelry store won't open. God damn it! God damn it! Hang on, sorry! The owner of the Michael Jackson pendant Howard pawned off the other day comes to collect. The door finally opens, and Garnett finally gives Howard the black opal back, but once the championship ring he gave to Howard is collateral, which Howard still hasn't gotten back for the pawn shop he gave it to. No, I left the fucking ring in Long Island! He gets into a shouting match with employee Damani, you fucking did this! which is then conveniently interrupted by Howard's doctor calling about the results of his colonoscopy. Hi, doctor, what's going on? Which is then interrupted by Damani doing this. How many acres? Whoa, whoa. Yeah, what are you doing? You're gonna kill the fish. What the fuck? My fish! My fish! My fish! You fucking get a glass! Get a glass! It's an absolutely manic scene, and one that's particularly representative of the frenetic and insanely stressful tone developed and maintained throughout the film. And it takes a lot of components working properly to create that kind of tone. But I want to particularly hone in on the film's screenplay by the Safdies and co-writer Ronald Bronstein and the way that they structure the story for our lead character. Hey boy, what are you doing? Howard Ratner is a man hell-bent on a mission, but hardly a scene goes by without... Hey, Howard, what's that I right the there? Phone, you ask Will you leave me alone? Everything in the world around him is constantly butting in and interrupting. Distractions are like a chronic illness in his life, always popping up at the most inconvenient times. The points, Let's uh, finish the bed this, here. Uh, hey, one thing at a time. This guy's I mean, come I'm on now. Howard, Howard. Jesus, how'd you find me? In fact, the story is almost entirely built around the distractions in Howard's life. Kevin Garnett arriving at the store and taking an unexpected interest in the Black Opal sets off the wild events of the film. Arno's henchmen sent to collect the money Howard owes are the proverbial thorn in his side with the knack for showing up at the worst of times. Howard's wife is a distraction. Howard, what are you doing? What are you doing? Howard, Benny's waiting for you. His mistress is a distraction. Just leave me alone, please. Come on, Howard. His kids are a distraction. You gotta use the bathroom. Just, the just bathroom. hold it in, all right? It's 25 Can't minutes before. Don't be ridiculous. And he goes upstairs to use the bathroom. I want to go to sleep. Couldn't go at uh, uh, grandpa's. You have to wait till now. And Discount Wella Sean just won't leave him alone. Oh, this fucking guy. Do not let him in. Understand me? But it's this never-ending stream of interruptions that Howard faces that I think are the building blocks of what makes him such an interesting character. Everything comes down to the way that he reacts to each and every distraction, which is sometimes gleeful. Holy shit, I'm gonna come. Sometimes pathetic. KG, it's me. I got great news for you. I... Hello? Hello? No one on the fucking phone! Sometimes violent. but more often than not, selfish and opportunistic. It's Kevin Garnett's 2008 championship ring. Championship ring? Championship ring, 2008. All right, you want to pawn it or you want to I sell want it? I want to pawn it, I want to pawn it. Let me take a quick look at right. it. Passive characters watch things happen, but reacting and watching are two separate things. For the first half of Uncut Gems, Howard is a reactive protagonist. He has a clear goal, which is to sell the black opal he's acquired. 
But the road towards that goal is paved with situations constantly distracting and diverting his attention, albeit situations that he is ultimately responsible for. I have every intention of paying you back. I'm broke right now. You're broke? What's that one? Look at that! There's a golden rule of character development that says the more often you can throw situations in a character's way to trip them up, the better. I locked my keys in the trunk of the car. Can you please, uh, can you come to the parking lot and open it for me? It's how they respond and deal with those situations that makes them compelling. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. Even the smallest, most insignificant struggles and problem-solving moments can be some of the best devices for building a character. Close the fucking door. Go, go to the other buzzer, please. Are you fucking kidding me? Action and reaction. Inevitably, that's what every great character can be boiled down to. And if Howard is built by his reaction to various interruptions, the chaotic tone of Uncut Gems is built by piling those interruptions atop of one another. In this scene halfway through, Howard isn't negotiating just one complicated situation, but seven. The auction manager, Damani, the Michael Jackson pendant, the black opal, Kevin Garnett's ring, his doctor's updates, and his mistress. Each of them constantly changing and smacking right into one another. And watching Howard bounce between all of them is a kind of manic joy. Fuck you! Out of my life! You have no idea what this is. The other effect that spending so much of the film's runtime watching him react and adapt while not at all in control is that it makes the moment in the third act where he reaches out and grabs control of the situation before him all the more impactful. Let's fucking bet on this. Let's bet on this shit. It's a gigantic risk, but by this point, we're rooting for him even if we don't necessarily like him. We just want to see something, anything work in his favor. Out of all the characters Sandler has played, Howard may just be one of the very best. And out of the Safdie brothers lineup, I think this is far and away their best work. It's really no wonder that everyone on film Twitter and Letterboxd and whatever else it is that constitutes online film culture was declaring it the most stressful film of the year. Cause, sheesh, you need a stiff drink after watching this one. You having a good time? Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video is brought to you by Mubi. So one of the weird issues I think we've all faced with streaming services is just how overloaded they can be. Not only are great films lost in the mix, but there are so many possible choices that I actually think I spend more time browsing and adding things to watch lists than I do actually watching anything. Mubi, however, takes a different approach. They feature only 30 films at a given time, with one added and one taken away every day. And I think that's such a fascinating strategy. Instead of just anything and everything being dumped on the service, every single film comes lovingly handpicked and curated so you know it's something worthy of being checked out. And right now you can try it out for free for 30 days by going to movie.com slash royalocean. Thanks so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time.